Hi, this is Graphic Alex coming at you with all things fat related. If that's something that interests you, please subscribe. I'd love to have you. Today, we're going to be looking at and reacting to Marissa Matthews' fat acceptance slam poetry in honor of <laughs> Taylor's new album. So let's go ahead and look at it. I haven't really listened to it. I do want to say I am going to be interrupting it as we do listen to it. So yeah, you guys can see what this is on here. Just Google that or search it on YouTube if you want to watch the whole thing. But let's go ahead and get into it because we will cover the fat acceptance talking points too. That she does. Okay. I don't fucking care. I don't care what society thinks about me. And I don't care. I think that that's relatively obvious. I also do want to say that there is an inherent irony to writing a poem about how you don't care because it's like you have to care enough to write the poem which is ironic which is a poetic device or a poetic thing so yeah <laughs> what you say or how you think about me i don't give a rat's ass if you give a damn about what i wear and i simply just don't care so I wonder if fat acceptance poetry is just, you just say the exact same talking points, basically, like you just rehash it. I'm waiting for the poeticism. Is that what it is? Poeticism. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk. I'm waiting for the poeticism, Marissa. I feel like I'm just watching fat acceptance TikTok right now. Come on. Come on, girl. Let's do this. I know this is seven years ago, but still, I have faith. My stomach's too big and I don't care if you think I take up space I'm gonna take I like that whoo I like that little chair in the background I just look I personally I'm not the most poetic person ever as you guys know I do have some writing history but my writing I wrote a lot of monologues so I did a lot of monologue writing in writing that is similar to journaling, I don't think that this is that great, to be honest. I will say, you guys who are poets in the audience, you guys can give your critique, but I feel like, and I, I feel like it's too direct. Like I'm not seeing anything poetic. It's just like straight up statements. Take up all the damn space that I want. And if I want to wear my hair a certain way, then I'll do it for me without thinking if someone's going to laugh at me or not. And because I need... I, I don't know. Like, it's not giving poetic. It's giving... I'm just going to get on here and rant about stuff that I always rant about. It's like, okay. Okay. I don't need your approval on how I present myself and how I act around people in public. Nobody really does. I mean, I don't know. There are some people who do, but... Typically, as an adult, you don't. So that's not even that impressive in terms of like, oh, I don't care if I do my hair a certain way or, oh, I don't care if I wear an outfit. It's like, okay, welcome to the world. Like, I don't know. I don't care either, Marissa. Does that mean I'm elevated and evolved like you? Is it? I mean, to me, that's just growing up. So... I have more important things to think about and to worry about than whether or not you think my burping in public is appropriate or not. What? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, I want to hear it again. I think I cut off someone's reaction. Appropriate or not. One. Oh no. That was her. Okay. Sorry, let me, I'm going to start it. but will just get back to it. In public is appropriate or not. One. One, they're good. Two, probably better than yours. Three, it's a natural bodily function, so get the fuck over it. <laughs> and four, I am resisting the gender stereotypes that our society has created. Just because... I yes, that's quite a resistance to burp in public. I don't know. I mean, this is not exactly give me liberty or give me death rhetoric here. I mean, I get that you're not American, but I'm just saying... That's not exactly like, whoa, what a cause to champion to burp in public. It's like, big deal. It's rude if you're a guy and you burp really loud too. It's always rude. 
you know, especially in public, it would be considered uncouth, which again, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. It's just, it is rude regardless of if you're male or female. I get that it's not a stereotype, but I don't know. Like I said, it's not exactly a give me liberty or give me death moment. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm a female does not forbid me from burping and performing bodily functions in public. And just because someone's a male, and that does not allow him to do to do it either. These what? Okay. So you're trying to say literally that you can, as a girl, burp in public, but a man cannot. Did I hear that right? That doesn't make any sense. But I don't think she's being very articulate. I think she's trying to say, like, it doesn't matter either way or whatever, or it should be the same, I guess. You know, I guess. Sure. I think it pretty much is at this point. I don't know, though. Maybe not. Maybe there's something I missed. I don't know. But I would think that anybody who burps really loud would probably be considered rude in a public setting. Not that that's the biggest deal, because it really isn't, but just saying. Stereotypes are created and are used to regulate how we act and how we are supposed to perform in society. And I just don't care about Hold on. society. And I just and are used to, to do it either. These stereotypes are created and are used to regulate how we act and how we are supposed to perform in society. And I just don't care about that. So I'm going to burp loud and proud all I want because there are no fucks left to give on my platter. I just don't. That was like halfway poetic. But I feel like most of this is just, this is, if anything, more of like a lecture than a poem. This is like you're giving a TED talk on burping in public. That's what this is giving. Give a damn, a worry, or a thought about what people think. You wanna know why? Because, oh, fuck, oh, okay. Sorry guys, I just messed up, but I don't care. <laughs> because it makes my life a whole lot. I love how that got more of a reaction than the actual poem. easier and guess what last time i checked we were living our lives for ourselves now if i were to care about what others thought it would take time away from my happiness and if i cared it would give me nonsense things to stress about and if i cared about what people thought it would take up unnecessary space in my mind that could be filled with more productive activity I mean, why would I waste my valuable thoughts worrying about what people think? It's getting a little repetitive. That needs to be edited. Especially when half of them, if not all, are irrelevant to my life. Caring about what people think is not a healthy way to live your life. And in retrospect, the, great, the strangers that you walk by are not going to give two fucks and whether or not your scarf matches the shirt that you're wearing. They're also not going to care that much about if you're fat. But that goes against your entire rhetoric. But, you know, maybe this is how she felt before she did the fat acceptance thing. But it's just interesting how much she changed where I feel like she did end up caring a lot. Because, you know, that's what her whole TikTok was about. Or whether or not your hair is freshly washed or three fucking days old, guys. So just do you, please. Just do you. Well, I think some people might care, but I don't know. If you want to put in the most low effort in terms of appearance, in terms of everything, that's fine. That is also a fatness stereotype, by the way. So just be aware you are uplifting that. But again, it doesn't matter, I guess, in terms of like, should I care about what other people think? You should and you shouldn't. I think I take a more middle of the road approach. I think it's important to be kind of aware, but you don't have to let it rule your life because I tend to have more of a view of like, I'd want to know what the rules are so that I can subvert them if I choose to rather than on accident or when I don't mean to, which that can be messy. Because sometimes you can take a stand on something that you ultimately don't care about on accident. And that can happen. And you don't really want to do that. So that's my opinion. 
but I don't care if you don't care. I don't care at all. Wear your hair however you want. Wear sweats if you want to, or wear a suit. You can do that as well. Um, and if you don't want to be a lawyer like the rest of your family and follow your passion instead, then please fucking follow your passion. And don't. I would agree with that. You know, it's your life. Um, I'm very much in favor of being self-directed in terms of career and partner choice. Because you're the one that's going to be with them. You're the one that has to go to work every day. Those are very major things. Those aren't, those don't really compare to what you're wearing or if you wash your hair that day. It's like totally drastically different levels. Um, I think it's better to care at least minimally about your appearance, but um, as far as that side, I do agree. Become what someone else wants you to become. Now, I hope that you do things for you, and I hope that you don't care what people think, because the only person's opinion that matters is your own. What you think about yourself is what matters. Um, I don't think that that's true. <sighs> I think it's kind of like this. Everybody's opinion matters equally. So in that sense, it either matters or it doesn't. If it doesn't, then it it's really a one to do whatever you want. If it does, then it's kind of like it does for everybody. So I would just say like it matters if you want to have somebody else in your life then you guys both have to kind of come to a conclusion, come to some kind of a relationship and come to some kind of consensus or rapport. So there has to be, you have to care at least a little bit about what your friends think or what your family thinks or what your partner thinks. If you want to have people in your life, I think it's a balance. I feel like Marissa tends to swing really far from like people pleaser to the extreme to like I don't care what anybody thinks ever and I think what's really important is to be balanced so be in the middle or you know look at different issues differently and that would lead to a happier life that's at least what I do that's what I suggest so I don't care and I hope you don't care either. Thank you very much for listening to Shit Mercy Says. Please find me on my Snapchat. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, I think it's, whoa. What is that? I think it's interesting um, how she kind of has that attitude. This is really interesting. I want to do this one where she was, this is back in like 20... 15. So I want to do that one too. But I think it's interesting. Oh gosh, that seeing that it just like destroyed my my line of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that I spent time where I cared a lot and where I didn't care at all. Like that was kind of like my Throughout my hypo recovery, I had two eras where it was like the exact opposite. Like 2022, I didn't care at all. I did whatever I wanted. I said whatever I wanted. It was like this really wild era for me. And it helped me a lot, actually, at the time. And then last year, I kind of had a whiplash where I was really embarrassed about a lot of the stuff I had done in 2022. And so I had like kind of a compensation where I really, really, really cared about what other people thought. And even on my channel, I had some audience capture for a bit. And it was really difficult and scary for me to post and stuff last year. And that's just like been weird hormone fluctuations and my hypo recovery and things that I've had this year, I feel like I'm normal. I feel like I have a normal balance where I'm not overly socially shamed or under social shamed. It's like a nice balance and I'm really happy. This is probably the happiest I've been, honestly. Um, like I'm not super happy about like 
my life at the moment, but I am happy about how I feel and who I am, which is like really different for me. (laughs) So I think in that sense, this is the happiest I've ever been. Um, But let's go ahead and listen to this one. So, yeah. I don't know what to expect with this. I wonder if this will be deeper. But this is a younger Marissa. Um, I think she was probably, she looks a bit thinner back then. Um, This is kind of interesting. But this one's called I Define Me. Okay, and this is from January 2015. So let's see. Hey guys, I'm Marissa. So I'm going to read something that I wrote and it is called I Define Me and hopefully you can relate to it in some form or another. So here we go. I have a friend who was called fat when she was 12 years old. I have a friend who was bullied all through elementary school because she was a little different. Is this one of those, I have a friend, but it's me type of moments? Let's see. I have a friend who has been made fun of because she laughs at everything and her laugh is loud and distracting. (laughs) Might be about her. I have a friend who was told that she was too fat to ride a bike while fucking riding a bike. I have a friend (laughs) who didn't like her body because of all the boys in her class made fun of her. All the time. That friend is me. Oh my gosh. Okay. I will just say it was a little obvious from the start, Marissa. But it was actually humorous. So I like this one better for the record. I do. I do. That friend was me. But today, I truly love myself. I really do. I love my weirdness and my crazy personality. I love. I do think it's interesting, though, to look at some of her past, kind of like, you know, how was the villain made, right? She kind of goes in line with that whole, like, I was bullied, I was this, I was that, I was made fun of, I had all these things happen to me type of mind, like, not mindset, but she had that experience. It doesn't sound like it was anything like extremely vicious. You know, I know that she does have some deep trauma in her past, um, but I'm not going to get into that in this video because I want to keep it a bit lighter. But in terms of the bullying side, it's probably, you know, more verbal bullying, which matters for sure. But I wonder if that's what led to a sort of overcompensation in her personality to to this day, I do wonder. But yeah, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Of my laugh because half the time it's funnier than the joke itself because it's loud. I am who I am today because of how I reacted to my past and not my past itself. I could have easily become a depressed teenager and hated my life enough to end it. I could have cried myself to sleep for a whole year because of their harsh words. But no, only one night of crying myself to sleep made an impact on me. Me crying. It's sad. My- it's kind of sad. Like, I don't like that kind of thing, but I'm also not Pollyanna. So I don't. I think it's just a function of schooling, how schools are run, public schooling, Um you know, and this kind of dynamic and putting kids all together. And there's a lot of times where there isn't an adult around that kind of thing. So um, I've heard the expression, it's kind of like having kids raise each other kind of thing. Like it's kind of a weird concept, especially when you have like really huge class sizes and all these different things. Like I think the schooling system really needs to be reformed drastically because I don't think it's functioning very well. But I think a part of the way that it's built, it, in a lot of ways, it's kind of run similarly to prisons, not completely, but there is still these pecking orders and there's still these situations where kids end up bullied. 
And so I think that the way that the schools are run, they're not going to yield a different result. So I don't like bullying. I don't have a kid, but I feel like if it was my kid, I wouldn't want my kid in a situation like that. I don't care if something, if there's like mean words back and forth, but if it's like, if it was something where there was like active harassment for like a year, I would not allow that. You know, I'd have to do something else. Luckily nowadays we have more like homeschooling options or just there's more things like that. And I feel like people are kind of pushing for different options in terms of schooling and we're kind of seeing how it isn't working. So for that, I kind of feel bad. I hope it gets better. I don't have the answers, right? But those are just some of my thoughts. I think it's bad that she was bullied. I don't think it's good. I don't like this narrative of like being bullied makes you ambitious. And I don't like that. I don't think it's true. I think it's a cope. And I just think it's just a bad thing. Um, honestly. So I'm not one of those that's like, oh yeah, bullying's amazing. I don't think so, but I do think criticism is amazing. So I don't agree with like shielding criticism to kids all the time because it's something you have to deal with. But there's a difference between criticism and bullying and like if she's crying herself to sleep at night and stuff like that's really sad, honestly. So I think that that's kind of sad. And then you see the damage, it makes you kind of, you know, it's probably at least contributed a bit to how she is now, if that makes any sense. Myself to sleep because I was upset about what somebody else said to me would not change anything. It wouldn't take back what they said and crying wouldn't make me forget. Crying over something I cannot directly change is not productive, so why do it? Crying over someone's words and crying over something I cannot positively influence as a young 13-year-old girl. But what is productive is the fact that I didn't allow those harsh words to define me. So I think that there is value, especially if you are very emotional as a person. Um, This might just be how she coped with things, but I think there is value in expressing emotion or in feeling emotion. I think when we try to suppress it, it can lead to an ED, something that we talk about on here a lot, BED. It can lead to that kind of thing. That is actually a suppression mechanism for these things. So I do think there is value in feeling how you feel. There's also value in feeling how you feel and then moving on. That's true too. There's also value in accepting that you can't control how other people act. So those things I see like she has some ways where she's right and some ways where she's wrong. It's interesting. I do not allow those people's actions and ignorant remarks towards me define who I am. Yeah, no, I don't think you should. Sure, I've been used and abused by all sorts of people in my life and in my past, but that does not define how I view the general population. It is how I read. That's very positive, but that's also sad. Like I said, I feel like she was an extreme people pleaser and then now she's the extreme opposite. And I think it's a compensation. And I think that that's negative. I think balance, balance is key. Act to these unfortunate events in my past. And it is how I react in a positive way and not a negative. Those events do not define me. And those people do not define who I am. I define me and I define who I am. So... You know that lady who was in front of you in line at the coffee shop the other day? Well, she hates herself because of what some girl said to her in high school 20 years ago. And you know that parent of your... I don't know. I think you need to move on if it's been 20 years. I'm sorry. I am one of those. Like, I have a lot less grace when you're an adult. It's like, oh my gosh. Like, if it's a comment, you need to get over it. I'm sorry. Like, I will just say it flat out. Um, because I don't think you should think about stuff from high school that, that long. I just don't. And maybe that's easy for me to say, cause I was, I honestly wasn't bullied in high school. I wasn't, um, 
throughout the time that I was in middle school and high school, I'm sure you guys aren't surprised. I had people try, but I didn't allow it. I'm sure you're shocked. I'm really sure that you guys are really, really surprised. But, and I got a little bit of it from both girls and guys. And I mirrored it. So if girls tried to start rumors about me and tried to exclude me, I would quickly fight back by starting rumors about them and excluding them. So I would do it. I could do it. Boom. And I could do it while I was friends with all the mean girls in junior high. Um, and then in high school, when, or when guys would try to, they typically would try to physically bully me. And when that occurred, I would hit back. I remember this one guy, he kept bugging me in, um, in class. I don't remember what he was doing, but it was bugging the crap out of me. And um, I kept telling him to stop and he wouldn't stop. And I picked up my desk and I slammed it on his foot and he never, fu- he never fucked with me again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was trying not to cuss, but she cusses all the time. So it doesn't matter. So that kind of thing. And then like there were times where like a guy would like hit me or try to do some, well, not like hit me, but try to hit me. And I would hit back very quickly and very hard and they were always shocked and then it was the same thing when I one time these two guys were throwing like little rocks at me and I wouldn't give them a reaction so I was always good at that I never gave anybody a reaction I never would allow stuff like that But honestly, that's just me. You know, I know there's a lot of people that struggled with bullying, but I wasn't, honestly. Um, There was one person when I was in high school where I was scared of him. Um, So I would avoid him when I was a freshman. But I was able to avoid him. I would, like, stalk and see, like, if he was in the locker room because he had a locker above mine. And I didn't trust him or I, you know, I didn't trust it. I felt like he was a bully and he was going to mess with me. So I would avoid him like the plague. So I basically did all the right things to not be bullied because I could either laugh things off, give no reaction, avoid the person like the plague or fight back extremely effectively. And, um, so yeah, I don't know. It never happened, you know? And sometimes I feel like people think I was, but I really wasn't. Um, There were some times, too, where when I was younger, I had a situation where a guy bullied me or he attempted to, or maybe he did, but I was really young. I was probably like, you know, 10 or under the age of 10, like around there, maybe older, maybe like 11 or something. I don't know. I was in that range. I was younger and he tried to, but he ended up coming out later in life. So that that's very much a thing too. I have had that experience, but again, nothing ever went on for that long. And, you know, in that situation, it was complicated. Um, but I just told people, so I don't know. I don't know. You guys, I dodged it like a bullet, I guess. Cause I just wouldn't, I wasn't, you know, So it's interesting. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I went into detail about that, but I'm just trying to say that I don't understand the trauma of it. So I can't necessarily speak to what it does to a person. I just don't think it's a good thing. I don't. Um, That's all I can say, you know. Friend who never comes to any of the sporting events to support their child. Well, that's because they're afraid to face the environment that they were bullied in. Now, take destiny into your own hands. As cliche as that sounds, it's true. This is your life, and you need to live it for you. It's time to take all those negatives out of your life, and it's time to learn from your past experiences. You don't want 20 years to pass by, and when you look back, you haven't accomplished any of your goals because of what some person said to you who is now invalid. You are beautiful. 
I just want to say that I see that muscular guy behind you. That's not a fat guy behind you. Just had to point it out. I am beautiful. And we are all fucking beautiful. So don't let those ignorant bastards of the world define who you are and determine who you will become. Challenge it. And challenge yourself to do something new. Personal growth is one of the most accomplished feelings in the world. I know. You have to stop living your life by everyone else's standards and you need to live by your own. You define your own standards. Not the funny thing is, is I, I kind of agree with her, but I was that one that defined everything and did everything I wanted. And I, I was that person in my 20s and I was very miserable. So I don't know if that's really the right way. I really think balance is key because not having any boundaries or living how I want it or whatever, it was like just having a lot of BEG experiences, you know, and a lot of things like that. And it was having a lot of loneliness, isolation, exile, um, being persona non grata, a lot of these experiences, which they have shaped me. I may not have been bullied in high school and in junior high, but I definitely was ostracized, outcasted as an adult which it was traumatic because it was a feeling of falling from grace, which is really difficult to like deal with in that sense. Like it's like you had it, you had the status, then you lost it. And there's kind of a big trauma with that. But that was my experience because as an adult, I was treated really badly. I fought with a lot of people. I had a lot of issues with boundaries with people. I had a lot of situations where I was treated really badly, where I treated other people badly. You know, it went back and forth. Very nasty, visceral experiences in my 20s. Um, And a lot of being outcasted and shamed and thrown to the wayside, thrown under the bus many times. And that does come with it too. So Marissa may have said all this as a bright and young 20 year old or however old she was when she made this but the reality of it is that it it isn't always fun it isn't always the best you know I still will stand up for what I believe in or do what I need to do or whatever I don't live by other people's standards that really has not been me as I told you guys I'm not a people pleaser but it's actually helped me to be more balanced because it doesn't have to be that hard. Like you can work with people, you can be gracious, you can be polite. Like you don't have to be nasty to be strong. And those are things that I had to learn that I learned in my 30s. Okay. So no shade on Marissa here. I'm just saying I have to provide a counter narrative because I feel like I'm finding more balance in my 30s instead of like, being the cool mean girl in middle school and then being kind of a loner in high school and then being the outcast in my 20s the the witch the albatross if you guys are swifties look up that song that song is me period i am the albatross i am the albatross anyways um that was really nerdy but yeah Spent my 20s, I think my whole life I've been the albatross. So that's more of a lifelong thing. But um, that's just somebody who's like, people warn you or like they warn people about you, you know, and you're this, you're seen as this evil person. That's why I wear the witch hat, right? It's a Scorpio rising in me, right? So um, yeah, that'll always be there. But I've been the outcast. Now I'm coming back to normal and it's like, okay. This will be interesting. I don't know what comes next. You know, I don't. But I I do respect my outcast era because I feel like it did, it does give me a lot of understanding that I didn't have before. So. Call you back or the best friend who stabbed you in the back. You define your own happiness, not the stranger down the street or your manager. I agree. I agree with this. 
and not the actions of your friends on social media and not the amount of likes on your Instagram or the amount of retweets on your last wise words of the day. You define your happiness, not those materialistic things. You define that's true. Who you are and not those discouraging mentors or teachers and not those bullies in school and not your popularity on social media. They do not define you. You Her accent gives so much Degrassi for me. If you know, you know. You define you. You define yourself. So who are you? Yeah, I don't think this is that bad. Um, actually, this one wasn't too bad. This one it actually was somewhat inspirational. Um, I don't agree with it completely, but I can appreciate it for what it is. I'll give it a like, Marissa. I'm sure you're so pleased <laughs> that I liked it. But um, yeah, I don't think this one was that bad. It's very, very young, which is fine. You know, to me, it reads as somebody who's about to make a lot of mistakes and that's okay. That's what it's for. Um, but yeah, so before we go... I have something special to share. I have something very, very, very special and very gay to share. So don't leave if you want a little bit of tea. Okay? So because I'm the toxic one, as usual, we have to make it a competition. Okay? So we need to know who did it better, Marissa or me? Who did it better? Because look at this fat ass in the coffee shop reading poetry. By the way, Eric took this video and he put the gay sparkles under it. This is from 2018. So we love my massive BED relapse era. We love the weight. I love the lighting. It's really beautiful. Let me see if I can make it bigger so I can show you guys. But it will zoom in later. But I, I'm living for the lighting. Um, it really... Now that lighting, that is some fat acceptance lighting. Okay? I was loud and proud and accepting my fatness. I weighed about 370 at this time. And I'm 6'1". So I love that for me. And... I've heard a little bit of it. I haven't heard the whole thing, but I know this poem is like really something. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, this poem is about like this situationship that ended with my first love and it was like really scarring and I was devastated and incredibly salty. Um. So that's what this poem is. So let's go. I hope I don't die of cringe. Okay. But I wake in the middle of the night, sweating in bed, seeing that the struggle is all in my head. You always wanted me to swallow reality in the way that you likely wanted me to swallow something else. So scarring. So scarring. If you didn't hear it, I said, you always wanted me to swallow reality in the way that you likely wanted me to swallow something else. So scarring. Oh my gosh. 25 year old Alex over here getting wild. You forced it into me, even though I'm not so sure that it was ever that true. Either way, I'm left here bleeding for you. Who are you at the end of the day? Oh my God. <laughs> Has anybody ever talked to a liar before? Let me know what you guys if if you guys have. <laughs> My first love definitely was one. We love a closeted by. It's classic. Who were you behind the things you used to say? The lines were so blurry between us. We always struggled with that trust. But perhaps now you are quiet just like me for all the reasons I can see. It hurts to swallow indeed. It goes down like icy shards from a frozen lake. But this isn't something from which I can wake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 
dead. I love the delivery, though. The delivery is kind of everything. I feel like it was, I could read it. I'm, I love how I'm like, you guys have to judge, but I was amazing, period. Um, oh my gosh. This is making me want to actually read the whole thing, but I won't. I'll have to do that, like, on maybe my other channel. But yeah, I just want to say I've done it. I've done it. Okay. So I can judge it. Okay. And yes, I did read that for the record. I mean, I did read it in person is what I mean. <laughs> okay. I think I'm just going to read the poem since you guys are here. So I'm going to look it up. I'll be right back. Oh my God, you guys, I actually found it. Now you cannot find this blog. It's hidden. It's forever forgotten in time, but I found it. So are we ready? <clears throat> this is in honor of Taylor's new album. I'm going to be a tortured poet. Okay, so let's do it. <laughs> it's the bonus for you guys at the end. It's called Swallow. Super scarring. Yes, that is what I was referring to. Okay. Swallow. I step out onto a frozen lake. I see it crack every time I quake. As the ice breaks and I fall in, this cold reality hits me within. I gasp for breath, feeling that I might not escape death. But I wake in the middle of the night, sweating in bed, seeing that the struggle is all in my head. You always wanted me to swallow reality. In the way that you likely wanted me to swallow something else, you forced it into me even though I'm not so sure that it was ever that true. Either way, I'm left here bleeding for you. Gosh, that is so tortured, you guys. Tortured poet, period. Who were you at the end of the day? Who were you behind the things you used to say? The lines are so blurry between us. We always struggled with trust, but perhaps now you are quiet, just like me, for all the reasons I can see. It hurts to swallow indeed. It goes down like icy shards from a frozen lake, but this isn't something from which I can wake. So I will say it's it's very tortured poet. It is very like, uh, you know, but it was actually an emotion and it was actually a poem, Marissa. And it actually has like metaphor and things like that. Um, But it's essentially about you know, having to take reality, like you'd take a, you know what, essentially. Um, and it was over. Of course it was over. Of course it was over, young Alex. Of course it was. It was never going to work, which that's just chef's kiss. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, <laughs> let me know what you guys thought of all of this. I feel like there was a lot to talk about. Um, I will see you guys again very soon. Have a good rest of your day, night, whatever. Peace.